Well, hello, friends. It is so good again to see you this week. Thank you so much for joining me, Pastor Zach, for this week's children's sermon. I hope you're doing well. I know some of you probably have already gone back to school, and I know this time next week that all of you probably have gone back to school, for which we give thanks. And I know sometimes it can be a struggle and you don't want to go back, but there's also so much good learning to be done. And we give thanks to God for you and your teachers and the bus drivers and your parents uh, who will bring around a great year for you of learning and friendship and hopefully many, 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 many signs of God's love. To mark this start of the school year, this Sunday, we're going to have a blessing of the backpack. So I, I invite all those young in heart or young in age to bring uh, work bags or backpacks or whatever school supplies or work supplies you might use so we can bless those for a great year ahead as we start this new season once again. Friends, I am just so grateful for you that you've decided to take this time out of your day to hear what God has in store. As always, I want you to find that comfortable spot inside or outside and let us take a deep breath in and a deep breath out together. Ready, one, two, three, in. Hold it and out. A reminder that God gives us the breath of life and that God is always calling us to love him and love our neighbors more. Speaking of loving God, that's what our text is all about today from Matthew. Last week, we just heard the story of Peter making the confession that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of the living God. And now this week, Peter kind of messes up a little bit and Jesus doesn't want him to mess up. He, he tells the disciples that he is going to die and that he will be, that he will rise again. And Peter does not want that to happen. He does not want his Lord to die. In which case, Jesus kind of says, you're wrong. This is what I have to do. And then Jesus says this. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with the angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Now, there's a lot there, and some of it can be kind of hard to hear from Jesus. But I think what Jesus is telling us is that being a follower of Jesus, being a disciple of him, is that it's kind of tough. It takes sacrifice. It takes a different way of living and lifestyle, for which case we are transformed. And that's why we need the, the Holy Spirit to come into our lives, to remember that we have this breath of life that can transform us and change us, that although we might want to think this way, we ought to think this way and do otherwise. There's so much complex stuff. There's so much, so many things that don't make sense all the time. And Jesus here is saying that the life of a Christian, life of followers of him are kind of tough. It kind of, you don't necessarily know what's going to happen, but we know that we can rely on Jesus because Jesus is the one who is the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus is the one who has come into the world to love us and be with us and to raise us to new life so that we can live with him forever. This is the Jesus we follow. This is the Jesus who tells us that we ought to take up that cross and follow him. And we do it with love. And then our Romans reading. This is a letter from Paul. Paul wrote a big, long letter to the church in Rome. And he talked about the marks of the true Christian or, or, what, or what makes a Christian, so to speak. 
And these are his first words, and I'll read a few. Let love be genuine. I think that's a great one we could talk about for, for a very long time. Let love be genuine. It's not this fake love where we just don't, we do it because we have to, we don't want to, we uh, might look happy, but when they turn their backs, we might do something else. <clears throat> Paul is saying, let our love be genuine. Love one another with mutual affection, which goes to show that there's there's more than one person, that, that love is a condition, that love is this action that transforms lives for me and you and the whole world. He writes, rejoice in hope. Isn't that great? Rejoice in hope that when the going gets tough, when things don't seem to be in place, we hold on to the hope we have in Jesus. We hold on to the hope that is in the cross and the empty tomb. And maybe one of my favorites, this is Romans 12, verse 15. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. <clears throat> now I have a feeling that you all have friends and sometimes our friends need us in different ways. Sometimes our friends are happy, in which case we say, what, what's, what makes you happy? And then we can laugh and play with them. But then there are some times that maybe we or our friends are sad, in which case we maybe aren't as happy as we normally are. So we can be and show that love that our friend needs. Have you, have you done that before? I'm willing to bet that you have, for which I am here to say that God puts you in that place for a very good reason, so that you can love your friends, that you might show them what God's love feels like, right? Because what we're all about is saying that you are loved and you are enough, and nothing can separate us from God's love made known to us in Jesus. Paul says a lot of other stuff, but those are the main, the main things, the foundation <clears throat> of what makes a Christian or what, or how a Christian is transformed and ought to act. Let love be genuine. Love one another with mutual affection. Rejoice in hope and rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep ultimately just share God's love with each person, <clears throat> reminding them that they are a child of God, that they are meant to be here, that they are loved and enough, just like you are, just like I am, because God is here doing a new thing. So why not <clears throat> try these new things out at the beginning of a new school year? Maybe <clears throat> to do one new thing a day or to do one act of kindness or love a day for your friends or maybe for even a stranger. It's what the shirt says, God's work our hands. It doesn't have to be much, but I promise you that even the smallest thing will mean the world to that other person. Friends, let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks for the sunshine and a beautiful day that we can learn what it means to pick up a cross and follow you because that cross is marked with love and sacrifice. In loving you, we can love others because you also love us and you've loved us first. So let us rejoice, let us have hope, and let us love. Grant that to us, Jesus. Amen. Friends, thank you again for joining me this week. I hope you have a great Labor Day weekend. I hope to see you in church on Sunday for blessing the backpacks. And then that following Sunday is when we start up Sunday school again on September 10th. And we'll also have God's work, Our Hands Sunday. Friends, take care. God bless. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.